You go through the entire first level and nothing happens. But the whole time you're waiting for somebody to jump out of a door at you, nothing happens. Then you go to the next level and it's the same giant hallway and you start walking by, then all of a sudden you hear a noise behind you. What has to happen in the first 10 minutes of a horror screenplay? Back in the day, they used to say when they would pick up a horror movie distributors that you had to have a kill in the first five minutes of your horror movie. And that was a requirement. So most of the time, because you want something to hook the audience, you want to get them in being like, this is what this movie is going to be about. A movie like Scream does that really, really well by having this whole like nice, happy scene and then killing the biggest actor in the movie, which was from Psycho, Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. You have a whole opening sequence with this high-end actress and then they kill her. And then the movie starts and it's like, that's a little more than five minutes, but in Scream it was five minutes. You need something big, a big inciting incident like that to hook the audience in and be like, oh, okay, this is the ride we're in for. And I think that's important. I mean, that's important with every movie. You have to have something to hook them at the beginning to be able to bring them in. And if you start off with a very slow sequence in the beginning and your audience starts to nod off 20 minutes in, that's a problem. You know, you don't want that to happen. So usually you try to start with a bang and end with a, a bigger bang, I think. Yeah, I know with Children of the Corn, that was pretty gruesome. That was actually mm -hmm. too gruesome for me. But with Carrie, I don't remember within the first five, ten minutes. It was kind of a slow build, wasn't it? It is a slow build. But it was still very effective. Carrie's much more of like a giallo type style, like an Italian style of, of the slow, lots of reds, lots of deep colors, uh, which is a big fan base for it, for sure. And there's definitely different types of genres of horror, I think, that you kind of can look at. I mean, there's slasher is a genre and giallo is a genre. Uh, there's comedy horror, there's action horror. It's really interesting about the comedy horror is you look back again to the Great Depression and comedy horror came in then when they started introducing Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein because the world was on fire and everyone was depressed. So they're like, okay, we got to bring movies back in that can raise spirits to kind of keep people's minds off of this. And they started introducing those comedy movies with the fans of, of the monsters at the time. And so that kind of helped. And that's happened too. That happened in the 80s as well with the horror where it started off strong, strong slashers. And then by the end of the 80s, Freddy Krueger is a joke and he's making one-liners and the movies are funny and they have like movies like Student Bodies, which is a spoof of slasher movies. And then Scream ends up coming out in the 90s, which is basically a spoof of slasher movies as it is, just told a little bit more seriously. And then that got its own spoof and scary movie, which they made five of. So it kind of goes in hand, hand in hand, horror and comedy. But you want that roller coaster. You know, you want to have the tension of, of running for your life. And then the humor where it's like, oh, oh, we survived. We're okay. He made a joke. Okay, now I feel better and I'm good. And that's like, oh, 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 that's back up and that's back down. So that's the overall hope, I guess. Right. What about in Japan? They had a 10 year, 10 year depression. What, did, what kind of movies? Give I actually a, have no idea. Yeah, okay. About yeah, I'm that. just curious if if it followed a similar um and their yeah, their movies are very spiritual. You know, everything's a spirit, a lot of spirit based, demon based. Um Japanese horror is very specific, which is cool. It's very it's very in tuned. We went to Japan for our 10th anniversary, and one of the things we did was we went to this this incredible theme park called Fuji Q, which is the base of Mount Fuji, and in it is the world's biggest haunted house. It is four stories tall. It's it's a it's a uh, hospital. It's a massive, fully sized hospital. And you walk in, and they tell you all your instructions in Japanese. I have no idea what they were saying. And then they're like, "Okay, goodbye," and they slam the door. And they told us it lasts forty five minutes. And I was like, "How on earth does it take forty five minutes to walk through a haunted house?" And so you go in. And it's literally an abandoned hospital. And you go to a hallway and there's a room full of doors. And every door is slightly cracked open. There's like 30 doors in front of you. And the lights are flickering. But you find out really quickly something I'd never seen before in a haunted house. And one of the, and this is definitely the best haunted house experience I've ever had. It's soundproofed. So when you get into the hallway, all you hear is your heart beating. You hear nothing. It's like a vacuum. And you're like, you usually hear that like blast music and they blast sounds and everything and there's you're in a line with 100 people nothing 
And so all of a sudden they're like, okay, go ahead. And you have to get out of this hospital. And so you start walking down this long 50 foot hallway, longer than that, probably 100 foot hallway really. And you walk down it and you're peeking into each door and you're like, all right, my wife's like close. And, you're, and it's just you and your party. So just my wife and I walking through this entire thing. And you walk around, you go through the entire first level and nothing happens. But the whole time you're waiting for somebody to jump out of a door at you, nothing happens. Then you go to the next level. And it's the same giant hallway. And you start walking by, then all of a sudden you hear a noise behind you. And you turn around and you see a guy just standing in the middle of the hallway staring <laughs> at you, like zombified, just staring. And it's just you two in this big empty hallway and this dude. And then all of a sudden he starts screaming at the top of his lungs. <laughs> And he runs at you at full sprint. And so, of course, my wife is gone. Like, she's taken off. And I'm still looking to see what's going on. And so we start, you start running down this hallway. <laughs> and he is right on your heels. Ah, ah, he's just screaming at you. And you get to the end of the hallway and you turn around and he's gone. <laughs> and then you're like, we have 30 more minutes in this building. <laughs> and you go through all these other little things. And it was crazy. But I was like, wow, what an experience. It was so nuts. And I'd never experienced anything like that before. Not in American haunted houses. So that was pretty neat. Wow. Uh, that sounds fun. And you can build a lot of creepiness in your own mind by yourself with nothing around you. So we're, we're kind of subconsciously we're accustomed to how fear works. It's like, okay, someone's going to jump out of that door. Or, oh, this light's going to flicker. This thing's going to happen. That's probably what's going to be. You know, people try to walk through these haunted houses and call out everything. You go to like a Halloween Horror Nights or something and like, well, that guy's going to be over there. And then he is, and it's like, oh. But that was a really interesting experience for sure. Oh, that's really cool. I like that. And it's about suspense, it sounds like, more than anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, you're, of course, going, you only have one way to go. So you're not really making too many decisions while you're stuck in this haunted house. But you literally, all you hear is your heart beating because it's like a vacuum. And so you're just like, <gasps> And even running around, and so now then you got to go upstairs, and they have they had certain things that would like run mechanics, so you'd walk by something and it would just go boom and just slam right next to you, <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing there other than the like little mechanical thing, and it'd be like, oh my gosh, it was awesome. That, that was sounds really cool. fun. I like that. Should something scary happen on page one of a horror screenplay, or is it better to just stretch it out a little farther? I don't think it necessarily should happen on page one. I think tension is really important, and I think building. In a horror especially, you build your location, and you build your characters, and you build your tension. I remember there's a great story about in, I'm pretty sure it's the first Alien. I can't remember if it's Alien or Aliens now. But there's a whole scene of the spaceship waking up at the beginning of the movie. It's just the empty hallways and the lights turning on of the spaceship, like introducing this dramatic arena that we're getting ready to experience. And I always thought that was really important to where it's like you, you build, you want your stories to build and build and build. And so as far as something scary happening in the very first page, it would have to be like an immediate slam or something. And, and I think movies will use gimmicks like that where it's just like, boom, there's just a loud noise because it's going to startle you because you're in a theater with bass and surround sound. And you're just like, ugh, because it's, it's there. But I don't necessarily think it should be on the first page, but by page five you kind of want your audience to know what they're in for to give them a little piece of how to expect what's going on because i i like ramping things i like starting off and going up and up and up and you have little divots and you go up and up and up and then end so i think that's important too um i also think people are scared by different things like if you have someone cutting someone's throat in the opening shot someone might be like Someone might be scared by that. I wouldn't be scared by it. It's like, oh, well, that sucks for that person. Or it's just gross or it's gory, but it's not really scary. I feel like the ultimate fear is, is when you feel your heart start to pound over the tension and the music and the moments and everything's building up and you know something's going to happen and you're baiting the audience to get to a certain point to then you can you know, slam it in or distract them. And then they're kind of like, oh, that's like, oh, and then it comes out like two seconds later and sure. startles them because they're not. They're not fully prepared. Um, but every movie is different too. It, it, I think it kind of depends on what, what exactly the script calls for and the vibe the movie has and kind of what direction you want it to go in. 